What's going on, everyone? Hope you're having a great day as always. In this episode, I'm going to be sharing with you a recent podcast that I had with Kirk from Four Corners, and we discussed all sorts of really cool stuff from music, entrepreneurship, and just making kind of decisions as you move about your life's path and kind of setting goals for yourself. So this is episode 40, and I hope you enjoy the fact that I'm sharing these videos on YouTube. If you do, hit this with a thumbs up, and I'll continue to upload videos of the podcast. Otherwise, you can hit up iTunes and listen to We The Ether podcast there or go to wetheether.com or use any other podcasting app and you'll be able to find We The Ether pretty simply. So I hope you enjoy it again. Hit it with a thumbs up, save it, share it with your friends, all that good stuff. And without further ado, I give you myself and Kirk from Four Corners, the official Toronto Raptors DJ and much of many other things in conversation. See you again next time. Yo. Oh, shit. Hey, hey, what up? Chilling. Can you see me okay? Yeah, yeah. Am I backlit too much? Uh, no, you look good. I got like light, like fancy lights here and shit lighting me up. I do not have that. Because I just found out we were doing a video like right now. Uh, that's no big deal. Yeah, I use, I use them for, the, for YouTube. I figure I do the video because um, then I can post it to YouTube and then push that traffic to the... To the yeah, the I get that. Yeah, it just makes more sense. I get it. I see what you've been doing on the on the tube. Yeah, yeah. I've been uploading there for like four or five, four years now. You know, I thought I'd have, yeah. uh, but I'm not that consistent with it. I, you know, I, I don't, and I don't have that many videos, something like just under 300. You know, some people that have been on there for, for that long have like, like over a thousand videos. So those people yeah. have like growth. 300 but, in a year, easy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's a lot to keep up on just the social media stuff, plus the working and everything else. It's like, oof, just, yeah. Instagram too. Like I'm just, as you, as you hopped on, I'm like trying to figure out the post for the day. Yeah. Like every day I'm like, all right, here we go. Yeah, exactly. I actually started messing with YouTube earlier this year. Okay. And I'm like five videos in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot, man. Like it's a lot. It to is, plan man. what you're gonna do, to shoot it. Shooting is the easy part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plan it and then editing. Exactly. Ed editing is like kind of a, a holding point. Like I have a bunch of stuff that I film, but it's like I don't. Uh, I don't hire someone. Sometimes I'll, I will, but I find that I'm so like particular. I want to edit it a certain way, and it's so much back and forth. I might as well do it myself. It doesn't take that long, but like no, still, but like, it takes half hour. It's like oh man, to find that half hour just to, like put it all together and upload it. Down. Exactly. Um, Exactly. The sound is okay and everything. Yeah, or should I get my headphones? No, no, you sound good. You sound good. Yeah. So, um, just just to kick things off, uh, do you mind just introducing yourself for anyone that's listening that's not familiar with with you or what it is you're involved with, what it is you're doing? And, um, uh, just as as a side note to that, I put all the information in the show notes of this uh, episode on the podcast page and on the YouTube video as well. So it, it'll be there for people to reference if they need to. But okay. In their own words, you know. Of course. Hey, this is Four Corners, the official DJ of the Toronto Raptors is what a lot of people know me as. I'm also a DJ and producer. I tour the world playing clubs, concerts, festivals, all that good stuff. I'm also the Canadian regional director for DJ City, which is the biggest DJ record pool and platform in the world, reaching like thousands and thousands of DJs. We push DJ culture and also supply all the DJs with all the music that they need to be banging in the clubs. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, I actually didn't even know that part. Uh, I knew like the other stuff, but I, is, is that new? Something you just got involved with recently? Yeah, I actually just, uh, I mean, I've been a client, customer of the DJ City service for years. Okay. And uh, through a series of very fortunate events, I ended up being staff as of May of this year. Um, they've expanded. It's an American company that has expanded into different territories and had the regional reps. Like, they have a team in France, they have a team in Spain, a team in the UK. Japan, a few others, and yeah. there wasn't any representation in Canada, which is ridiculous because we're leading in a lot of areas of music nowadays, just not just hip hop, but electronic music. We have some of the biggest artists in the world coming out of this country. So I uh, reached out and was able to connect with a few of the right people and they saw it fit to put me at the helm of the Canadian situation. So I'm the one now flooding that platform with Canadian DJ and musical content and throwing events in the name of building DJ culture. So it's pretty awesome. Man. 
Now, are, are you also getting involved with it outside of Canada? Because you do tour and whatnot too, right? So are you like uh, collaborating with people that are representing that outside of, of Canada as well? And Absolutely. It's it's the, the company is, there's a lot of people involved, but there's, it's still, a, I mean, the DJ community in general is very connected. Most of us, the tour are no more than two, one or two degrees of separation from each other. So we all kind of, people doing stuff, all kind of know other guys that are doing stuff. And with the situation, the way the network is set up through DJ City, there are reps in each country and then the smaller ones within those countries. And I'm actually already good friends and collaborators with a lot of them. And then the ones that I didn't know before, I've had the opportunity to connect with, or I continue to connect with them. So I, I mean, I just played a show about a month ago in Ibiza with the guy who is the head of DJ City Spain. That's pretty um, cool. Yeah, that's, that's nice you linked up with him. Yeah, and then there's, um, we do these things called link ups where we'll have like a DJ networking event in different cities around the world. And I've planned the one in Toronto and Vancouver over the past couple of months. There's actually one going on in London in two weeks that I'll be at because I just happen to be in London doing shows at that time. So uh, I'll get to connect with the DJs out there. And the main rep there, I've already known him. So we're all very, very connected. And we, we really help each other push things forward. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense that uh, you guys can all help each other grow and whatnot, especially with like social media, Instagram now, you just, it's so connected and you can just help each other grow on those platforms too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And it's such a family that anybody who knows, anybody who's, who's part of DJ City, if you see somebody else who is part of DJ City, it's like, oh, okay, cool. You're cool then. We can just start talking on a different level immediately. Yeah, yeah that's pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah. You, got, you guys know you're already going to click in a certain way, right? Exactly. It's like kind of like a, a, an old boys club of sorts. Yeah, that makes sense. And so how did you come up with the name Four Corners? Like, how, what, what, because I'm kind of a branding guy too. And some people, I don't know, might be wanting to start something themselves. Like, how did you end up coming up with that name? Um, that's a really funny, I mean, I can tell you how I came up with my name. It really doesn't have a whole lot to do with music, but it kind of evolved into that. Uh -huh. The first instance of that name in high school, me and a friend of mine who had nothing to, this is way before, I had anything to do with the music business. We caught wind of an old gangster movie of this Chicago gang called The Four Corner Hustlers. And we thought it was funny and cool. And like, we were like grade nine and trying to make our name for ourselves in the school or whatever. And like, not even really to other people, just to ourselves, we kind of called ourselves The Four Corner Hustlers and like had a little handshake. It was really stupid and childish. But for some reason that name resonated with me way past that point. So, I mean, that, that actually lasted maybe a month, two months, but I never forgot it. And then years later, I got involved in DJing by accident. It was kind of a hobby turned career. And trying to figure out a name, I enlisted three of my friends, like my cousin and two friends. And I was like, you know what? Let's call ourselves Four Corners. It's just, it was just a friend of mine. And then later on, I realized, you know what? The Four Corners of the Earth is a saying that resonates with everyone. And I was like, I do, I want to travel, I want to tour, I want to reach the four corners of the earth. And the name just made more sense at that point. Mm -hmm. And it's just been that ever since. I've never really thought of changing anything, even though there's been members that have come and gone. Now it's actually just me. And I've kept the name on. It was originally like a crew name. And I've kept that name on as an individual name just because it's, it's so powerful to me. Right, right. I, and I think it's like, it's really interesting. I just, I just was speaking with, um... Uh, a Jungian psychology coach, and he's a psychologist and whatnot, yesterday on, on this podcast, and we just, were discussing, because uh, part of my belief as well is what you're doing in the future, it, it, it beckons to you in the present. So, for instance, your future, what, where you're at now was beckoning to you back then, and there's this interlink between the two where the time between them, it's, almost, it, it's not like it becomes irrelevant, but it's like, you, you, you reach through time, beyond time, in order to create those things. And that's why it resonated with you so well. That's why it still does, you know, and that's why it was just like, boom, that's what I'm using, you know? It's pretty, it's pretty neat how that all progresses. Absolutely. Of, you don't really think about that. It's a lot to do with, like, your creative visualization of what you're going to do in your future. And if, you, if some people just spend that time, they can just, like, reach into the future, and, and it'll be something that will be calling you, right? You just have that feeling like this is it, you know? It's pretty sweet. Yeah. 
it's a similar to the theory of having like a vision board or like making cutting out things out of a magazine or writing things down, speaking them into existence. It didn't start that way, but it turned into that and, and it worked out. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's working out. It's continuing to work out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I just, I, I personally like the name. That's why I was, you know, wondering about it. And a lot of people, uh, and, and it is part of what I do for my nine to five, so to speak, job career is, is branding and helping businesses with their branding. And, and we make logos all day for people and stuff. And it's like we come up with names. So it's just, it, it's really interesting to me that, you know, you would have had something and then carried it on for so long. I was personally wondering where, where it started. I'm sure a lot right. of people do as well, because the process is really interesting. So kind yeah, of a lot of people, a lot of people do ask me that. And I had an interesting conversation with a young rapper recently regarding like figuring out his name. And when you really think about, I mean, some names just make sense. But when you really think about like the biggest brands in the world, they don't necessarily make sense to the product. It's just what they make of it. Like, Apple, for example, doesn't mean anything mm. to do with computers, but if you know the history of like why they chose the name, it'll kind of make sense. Mm -hmm. But you don't really need to know that history to appreciate and understand when you see that logo, you know what it means because it's, it's so ingrained in our, in our psyche at this point or like Coca-Cola or like a lot of these big brands, you don't even think about the name anymore. It just is. Right. Like right. it's what you make of it. Yeah, and it's interesting because you're doing it for a personal brand as well, but your, yours is kind of, you can flip it both ways a bit, as, you know, just in how it is. It's, it's very, um, I don't know, it's pretty neat. I think it's pretty neat. I like it. Why, thank you. Good job. Good job, man. <laughs> um, as someone that comes from a branding background for you to- Yeah, it's like, I would, I would charge a, a right. lot of money to do that, so you did it yourself. It's pretty <laughs> yeah. Um So going back to like your, your process, what, what was your first, your first gig like? You mentioned you kind of got into it as a hobby. Um, so how did that sort of unfold? Very, very organically and naturally. Like I've always had music around me. My dad was a musician and beyond that, he had an incredible record collection. So I grew up surrounded by all these records and he actually had turntables and a DJ mixer that he would just, he just had it just because he was a music lover. So he played his records, he made cassette tapes with the songs on them and whatnot. And at some point I just started fooling around with that too. And when I think back, like I, I didn't start really DJing until I was maybe 20, 19, 20, when I was starting university. But when I think back, I always bought records, even though my friends were buying CDs, because I thought, well, why would I buy CDs when I can buy records? I got, a rec I got two record players at home. And like Jazzy Jeff looks cool on TV with the, two, with the turntable. I want to I wanna do that. I would rather do that if I'm listening to my music than listen on a CD. You can just skip the songs. That's no, that's no fun. And when I really think about it too, like my 12th birthday party, I had a house party where I DJed that party. I didn't even really know what DJing was, but I know that I like to play the songs that I liked and I didn't want to have to listen to all of them. So I just had the two turntables and I played the records. And like, that was technically my first DJ gig when I think back. But as far as taking it seriously, it wasn't until, like I said, university, I started fooling around with the records mainly because I played sports through high school. And when I got to university, I went to York University here in Toronto and I did not make the varsity team. Like I almost did, I was a basketball star. But when I got to university, I did not make the team and that left me with a lot of time because I was always playing organized basketball. Same time I started going to parties and started seeing that DJ culture thing again. Like, the stuff that I'd seen on TV, now I'm seeing it in real life. And like, you look around in the room at a party and like, who's the man, who's the coolest person in the room? It's the one controlling the energy, the vibe. Mm -hmm. So I would find myself just orbiting the DJ booth instead of moving around the room. So, and then I was like, well, I have this stuff at home. So I just started fooling around. Then people started hearing that I had that stuff and like, hey man, I'm having a birthday party. You want to come DJ it? And it kind of went from that to me and my friend doing that. and it started, I started getting good. And at some point it just clicked. I was like, you know what, maybe I can really do this actually as a career, like those guys that I saw on TV when I was a kid. And here I am. Yeah, that's, that's really sweet. Yeah. And, and do you find that it was the feedback of the people, like for instance, that first time you played, uh, at a, it was a high school party, you said, right? It was like yeah. feedback from those people, just positive, And you just felt like, like, how's that feeling for you? Where you say you, you're kind of up there and you got the room and you're playing for the room and you know, they're just... Well, yeah, it wasn't even, 
it wasn't even specifically the feedback of people saying, yeah, yeah, that's dope. It was yeah, kind of, just, I felt dope. Like, I just yeah. felt awesome about it. It was so much fun. And I'm in control of making people have a good time. And, like, whether they specifically said it to me, hey, man, I had a good time because of you or not, I could see them having a good time. And I know yeah, that's positive. kind of what I mean by feedback. I mean, just general feedback. It doesn't even have to be verbal, but the feedback right. uh, that the people not, you know, so it was just generally that you, you noticed that you picked up on it and you just wanted to continue down that road. One million percent. I was doing something that was fun for me and people were having a good time because of it. And that's infectious. Yeah, yeah, true. And it's actually funny enough, that's, that's one of the ways we first met was like, I was just out. I was doing, I, back then, I was doing a lot of the booth and bottle stuff. And it's like, not so much what I do now, but <laughs> and whatnot. And yeah, I just came across, you know, I just loved how, yeah, exactly, the music you'd be playing. Um, you kind of can command a room that way and just like, just, yeah, just feed off the energy of the room and back and forth. And it's just, I'm sure you feel really charged as well. Uh, do you find that with that, you, you kind of get like to an energy high? And then do you find that there's some sort of crash, say, say on a day where it's slow, or if you don't get a bookings for a while, do you find like there's uh like you almost crave that, that energy, that feeling again, you know? Yes, absolutely. As a performer, like, it's weird too, because I was a really shy kid. But at some point, I snapped out of it and became this performer. Like, I live to be on stage. I love the feeling of being on stage. And when I don't DJ for too long, and by too long, I mean like a week, I feel legitimate withdrawal. Like I gotta, like I gotta do something. I gotta do this. Like there's a lot. I mean, as a, as a business owner, you know, there's a lot that goes into what you do, except for what beyond what people see. Like people see the performance for me. I work every day, like ridiculous hours sometimes because it's a small business essentially. But the gratification of it is when I get to step on stage and reap the fruits of my labor, and that's it to me. Like. Being in front of people is what really charges me up. And yeah, exactly what you said. Like when it's, when I'm not there for too long, it becomes a bit of a problem, and like, which is what lets me know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now it's really cool that like now social media, I guess you can satiate yourself a little bit with regards to that, just by putting something up online and then kind of engaging with your community that way. And then even do you, do you upload like, um, I didn't really notice much. I saw a lot of photos, but you upload any of your actual DJing stuff, like your actual, like something you could put together or your, your mix you put together. Do you have, have you tried putting one of those on Instagram and just, I don't know, seeing how it goes? Um, yeah, I don't really do like the, here's my DJ setup and I'm going to do some cuts for a minute type stuff. I, I can, but I mean, it's not really what I do personally. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have mixes like on on uh, the podcast, on like iTunes podcast and whatnot, where you can hear a set. And then I do have videos of like portions of my sets. Okay. That you can see, like what a live performance is, it's like type stuff. Okay. But then also with Instagram story that I use heavily, I live stream or I'll just do short IG videos while I'm in the middle of doing a set or have people take videos or like repost videos that people have taken of me during sets. I really like the the aspect of social media that connects us, like, immediately. Yeah, like, you'll be playing, and then people in the room can be, like, do, and then tagging you right there, and you're like, oh, shit, that's right there. It's just fucking crazy. Exactly. Like, I mean, I enjoy, obviously, prepared videos and doing that kind of stuff, and, like, hiring a videographer and having them shoot me while I perform and edit it and put music on top of it or whatever, or maybe just the live sound. But there's nothing quite like, like, we live in an incredible time, man. Like yeah, to be able yeah. to be on stage, film videos of myself performing or, or people near me, tag them, they tag it back, they forward it to other people, whatever. Like this is happening right now in real time. I might be in London, England, but you can be watching me perform no matter where you are in the world. That's, that's incredible to me. It just takes what we were just speaking of to an incredibly higher level because it's, that energy is not being fed, not just to the people in the room, but you can be literally anywhere feeling this energy yeah that's so cool and like even how i came across your instagram just uh when i saw it i was like oh shit there he is it's like when you find someone you're like there is where he's been i see it now yeah sweet you can keep up you know you keep up the speed on, on what the person's doing it's really cool because otherwise exactly. before that it's like everyone's in the dark like no one knows what's going on it's like you got to text them and be like hey man what's up or call them you know it's just like so much more work to reach out and stay informed but um, I, I personally enjoy it quite a bit, even just for uploading my stuff. But um, 
Yeah, so what's your favorite spot to play at from, from like the places you've toured? Because uh, I noticed on, on that Instagram, there were like a bunch of really cool pictures, a bunch of really cool places, especially recently. So I'm um, just wondering like your favorite place, either by the energy that you got off the room or just by the actual environment of, the, you know, the city, the town, wherever you actually went. You know. See, that's, a, that's a difficult question because I've been a lot of places. I've been, yeah. even this summer, as, as you, you've seen, I've been on tours in pretty much June. And like, I'm home right now, but I'm away. I'm off again to like Asia next week. Okay. Like I'm always doing something, I'm always going somewhere. And there are some incredible places in this world, party-wise and beyond. I'm glad that you said that as well. It's like the city, the vibe. Yeah, it's exactly. It's more than just the party. It's being able to go to these places and experience the cultures and eat the food and just take in the vibes. That is so gratifying and enjoyable to me. Like. When I say favorite places, I'm really, really, really enjoying London nowadays. I have a, um, a couple of club residencies there, so I play. I'm pretty much in London at least once a month. And their scene is incredible. It's thriving musically, fashion-wise, like everything. Plus, London's just an incredible city. It's a mecca for so many things. Just to walk around and look at it and see, like, the double-decker red buses and the, the changing of the guards at Buckingham Palace and all this kind of stuff that's, like, so iconic, it's, mm. it's just regular life for people. Or like Paris, the people live near the Eiffel Tower, like that's their view when they look out the window. And this is this thing that like, it's the most photographed monument in the world. Do you know what I mean? Like Paris is awesome, London's awesome, Barcelona's probably my favorite place. The parties are great, but the city is, have you ever been to Spain? No, no, I haven't. I highly recommend, if I can recommend three places, Barcelona, because it's just incredible in every way. It's a huge city, but also tropical, but also laid back and European. Tokyo is just the future. Anything that you can think of, all the sci-fi stuff, like any ideas for regular everyday life that you're like, why don't we do it this way, it would be better, or things that you haven't even thought of, they've been doing it like that in Tokyo. Like it's just so advanced and on a, on, on a large and on a small scale. Like it's, everything's incredible. And um, Dubai, Dubai is like, I can never live there because it's such, a, it's so strange that it's such a great big high tech city, but it's like 40 years old. So like everything, everything is new and they have the capital to make whatever the mind dreams up, they can make it. They have the world's tallest building. They're building a taller one, just cause they can. They created islands they've like built it's just an incredible incredible place to visit yeah that sounds that sounds pretty sweet i've only seen photos and videos of that as well and spoken to people that have gone there but um and and just i mean i have clients in all these places and we all do the virtual communicating thing but i don't go there so i'm always just like hearing about it but you know i i, I, I will be taking some sort of trips to the box. like man i just yeah it's, it's, yeah, because it's, it's cool. I speak to some people just like yourself, and it's like you guys are always traveling around, having these experiences, pretty neat. And um, yeah, some of some, some, some spots really sound really appealing, like Spain, like you said. Or uh, have you been to Italy at all? Yeah, I've been all over Italy, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Italy's great. Especially, I mean, Italian food is pretty much my favorite food. So, like, I'm in Italy, I'm in heaven. The greatest, okay. greatest meals you'll ever have from these like mom and pop restaurants that it's actually somebody's grandmother cooking in the kitchen or, or grandfather and like, you can taste the love and it's from, you're like, where, you're where it's from. Like, it doesn't get any better than that. Uh -huh. Yeah, no I, no, I feel you. And it's not even like going into Toronto into like uh, Little Italy and having something there. It's like nowhere no, whatsoever. <laughs> and, and beyond, beyond just like, even like there's other places in the world where you know, they're authentically Italian. They, they move, they're creating the food the way that they would at home, but the ingredients. Right, exactly. Yeah, the like type of wheat, chips, like all that they're stuff. They're from there. Right. They're right. picking the pasta from the wheat that was grown in Italy. It's like, it's different. Uh -huh. So what, uh, just to kind of shift gears here, this is uh, another question I have in mind, but what is your favorite music right now that you, that, and, and, and has music really been changing much over the past, uh, let's say five years, just from what you've experienced? Has it been evolving much? From what I, I'm not in the music business, but from what I've noticed, a lot of it just seems 
like very, very much the same recently. Like no, not much is being innovated from my perspective, but uh, you know, um, I kind of want to hear what you have to say on that. Yeah, you know what? Music is always evolving. It just goes through cycles in terms of what's the most popular. Whatever is the most popular, that's what you'll hear more of. And right now, hip hop is the most popular music in the world. Like you'll, the charts are always Drake, Cardi B, Post Malone, like, these guys are on top of the charts all the time. They're on the radio all day. Like you're inundated with this sound and it's a strange time for hip hop because I mean, I know you grew up on listening to hip hop all your life as well, just like me. And it's, it used to be everybody had their own sound that everybody had their own style. And if you sounded like somebody else, you were whack. That's changed. Apparently. I don't know when it went wrong. I think it's wrong, but it's become okay to sound like other people. So if somebody's popular, there's a wave of other people trying to sound like that until somebody else does something different and they're popular. And then there's a wave of everybody sounding like that. And people are happy and accepting of all of these people trying to sound like that person. So it just becomes a big mush of a lot of people sounding similar from time to time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't particularly enjoy that, but I understand it. And unfortunately as a DJ, whatever's popping is popping and I got to be in the know and like find what I like out of what's happening to be able to play in my sets. But fortunately that is, it seems to be like, that's, that's kind of like how pop music has always worked, but hip hop has become pop music. So that's why it's working that way. But at the same time, there's a lot of very cool collaborations happening with the, with DJs and producers and artists from different countries or different areas of each country and genres are being blended like crazy so like it's it's almost like there's a lot of music that's great and unclassifiable which is an incredible thing and i think it's because of the internet and the way that we are able to communicate with each other like i'm i'm also producing records and working on music and i'm collaborating with different artists from different places that i'm not always there like i'm working on a record with a, an artist from london right now and like I was in London a few weeks ago and we had a studio session, but since then we've just been communicating over Instagram DM to get the record finished. Do you know what I mean? And like yeah. that thing is very possible and plausible nowadays. So there's all these interesting collaborations that probably wouldn't have happened in earlier times, or maybe that's the reason why they didn't happen, that we're able to do that now. So for that reason, music is incredibly exciting to me because below the layer of the pop, popular stuff that we all hear all the time. There's so much creative energy ha happening. And if you look for it or find one artist and that'll lead you to another and another, whether you're listening on Apple Music or Spotify or whatever streaming service, you can find a world of really, really, really dope, fun, interesting music that's being created every day. There's more music coming out now than ever before because like people yeah, know all these cool platforms. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to be in a studio to make a good sounding song anymore. We know technology is gosh with everything. So I can make a song right here in my house, put it up on the platforms tomorrow, and anyone in the world has access to listen to it. So all of for, for all that reason, like music is to answer your question in a more concise way, because I'm just rambling now. Um there's a lot of music that sounds the same and it kind of gets boring, but there's so much music that's just pushing boundaries that I think it balances it out. It's exciting. Music is exciting right now. And when I, when I say things like London is thriving, it's like they've always kind of had their own scene there. And the music that's coming out of there is specifically very London. So it's like their sound mixed with the immigration that happens there mostly, which is a lot of African influence. So like, this hip hop, R and B, soul, jazz, house, African fusion that's happening there is like you're hearing sounds like yo, I've never heard anything like this before on a daily basis, and it's so dope. So that's really cool. It's like uh, culturally creating new music, like a, like a, like the way you're saying it's like a mashup based on yeah the immigration and then the local stuff just mixing up and all together and creating something entirely new. That sounds pretty exciting. Exactly. You almost got me wanting to like go look up like London, England, music, hip hop, and just like I will, start I'll down. Send you Spotify. I'll send yeah, you Spotify. Send me a Spotify. Actually, I need new music anyways. All I do now is just listen to like books and stuff. And sometimes I just like 
I don't know, I just want to go running or lift and just have something good banging in my ears. And it's like, I don't really like listening to the same old, like you're saying, like, it's, it's like Drake will do a style. It's like everyone does this style. It goes towards this like type of beat or, or this, uh, it's, it's just like, it becomes a little bit boring and repetitive. Uh, Absolutely. Do you think there's a specific reason why people have difficulty creating a new style? Kind of like even, like, does it take a certain type of um, situation, like that London situation? in order for that mashup to happen and create something new? Or is it that people just like creatively, they personally just reach this uh, stumbling block and then they don't want to work hard. So they just follow the wave of something else. Like, do you, like would you, how do you find people have difficulty creating or, or coming up with something unique? I think it's twofold. I think that the London situation is, is an example where despite what's going on in popular music, like don't get it, don't get me wrong. There are lots of artists in London trying to sound like Drake, but they just have such a burgeoning scene of their own vibes that, and there's enough people to sustain the popularity of it. Like there are artists from there. I think that's the real reason actually. There are artists from London that are, or from the UK rather, that are popular enough <laughs> in the UK to do stadium tours in the UK because there's enough people there that will buy, buy tickets and go. Or same thing with France. Like there's some French artists that are so massive in French speaking parts of the world that if you don't speak French, it's completely, you're not privy to it. Right, I, think I, I caught some of those actually. And I, I, I listened to, and I went to their Instagram page, it's like millions of followers. Like, yeah. uh, you know, I'm not in the loop on this one. Man. French music, British music, Latin music is starting to become mainstream, but there's so many artists that we like, it's not just J Balvin, Daddy Yankee, like, there's so many artists that are massive within that scene that we don't know about because they haven't crossed over because it's, there's a language barrier. You know what I mean? When we're talking about the stuff that all kind of mushes together and sounds similar, I think for the most part, we're talking popular North American music because number one, it's all English speaking. So like it's accessible to all of us. And number two, the second reason that I think unfortunately what you're speaking of is happening is there's a lot more people and they'll probably tell you different, but they're lying. <laughs> they're getting into music for the wrong reasons. They're not getting into it because they have a deep message to share. They're getting into it because that guy's rich. He sucks. I can do that. I'm going to do that too. Do you know what I mean? Like what he's doing is not that complicated. I can figure it out a way, a way to rap that good. And let me throw my hat in the ring and see what happens. And if you and if he starts doing well, then somebody else or ten other people are saying, "Oh, I can do that." And then they're all trying to like do the same thing. It's like a get rich quick scheme. You know what I mean? It would be similar to an investment tip. If ever somebody says, "Hey, if you invest in this, you're going to get rich within the next year," there's a lot of people that would like take my money. There's this formula that's being created that, hey, if you sound like this. You, there's a good shot that you can become popular like all these guys that sound like this. So they're like, okay, let me make some records that sound like that, see what happens. And a lot of them become successful. There's legions of them that don't, but a lot of them do. And for the same reason why you're saying, well, uh, man, I hate listening, like putting on a playlist and all these songs sound the same. They're all different artists all sounding the same because it's working. People are buying it, people are listening. And if there's a market, if people are, if there's this, the demand, you supply it, right? Yeah, I'm sure it's exactly. like just Instagram and everything opened up the market, right? Like everything, it makes it so much more accessible now so that someone could just be like, I'm going to start making Instagram videos, rapping, and then I'm going to start doing YouTube videos, and I'm going to just keep going from that. But again, just copying other people's it's stuff. It's good, but it's bad. Yeah, it's good, but it's bad. Like it's great that there's this vehicle or these vehicles for people who are talented or want to give something a shot to actually have an opportunity to get to reach people like with whatever your message is whether it's music or it's art or like it's spoken word or you were like motivational speaking fitness like what have you there are these incredible avenues like youtube instagram whatnot to get your message out but with that breeds an entire legion of people that are like sweet let's just try some stuff and maybe we'll get rich. Like, think about YouTube. How many YouTubers are, YouTubers are there just creating, like, why would anybody care about this? Yeah, there's so and much then, of that. Well, yeah. And then little kids, like, 
12 year olds get insanely infatuated because maybe they're a good looking person or maybe they're funny in some way or like they, they, they identify in some way millions and millions of subscribers but really if we're all being honest including the creator themselves not a whole lot of substance necessarily yeah, yeah. i'm not speaking of everyone but those who are doing that they know who they are they're they're creating something that's selling it's like a pet rock like if people will buy it cool but we know as we're selling it it's not awesome but if you want to buy it i'll make more rocks for you you know exactly. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's part of the reason why I've, I guess I've gotten hung up or caught up with the YouTube content is because I see those popular pages and I'm like, I don't really want to make videos talking about this nonsense right now, you know? And I'm sure if I did, I'd hop on those views. I might hit like the popular page yeah. I'm talking about, but it's like, I don't want to make pump out just those videos. And I see other YouTubers doing it and then they, they actually pass me in terms of subscribers. And it's like, I watch them going, I'm like, well, they're going that route. I mean, I'm just going to keep making what I want to make. It's just, it's this interesting thing. I'm hoping what I'm doing is going to pay off in the long run and I'm, I'm enjoying what I'm making more so than if I was to do like a kid's react video or do like a, my own reaction to some weird ass event that happens. some King Kim Kardashian shit. Right. Personally, I don't give a fuck about, but it's like, Oh, I'm going to talk about it for two minutes. Cause I know I'm going to catch those views. It's just, you know, I'm not, not personally interested. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, there's a lot of people. And that's the thing with social media that, like, I know that brands and companies and individuals and creators recognize the main target audience is very young. They're young and they're impressionable and they want to be entertained with a wide range of stuff. And it's not necessarily the most deep, substantial, meaningful stuff all the time. Sometimes it's just fluff, but it's, if it's entertaining or if it's entertaining for this five minutes, then so be it. And there are people that just feed into that and jump on, okay, that's the, the hot topic uh, in media right now. Let me make a video about that. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, again, it's a great, it's like, a, it's like any tool. You can cut meat with a knife or you can stab someone. It's how you use it, right? Yeah, that's, that's per per actually a perfect example, really. <laughs> um, so what, uh, what are upcoming dates do you have? Or like you're, you're touring right now. I know you mentioned you're going to be going uh, in two weeks, you said? Um, no, this week. Well, actually, yeah, this weekend I have um, a good friend of mine. I'm DJing her wedding on Saturday in Niagara Falls. I don't normally do weddings, but like for personal friends and whatnot, I do. But then Sunday I head off. I have a show in Dubai on Tuesday. Um, Taipei, Taiwan on Friday and Shanghai, China on Saturday. And then I'm back for a few days and then I'm off to Vancouver. We have um, the Toronto Raptors preseason is starting. So we have, we do a couple preseason games in different cities each year. So like Toronto is the only team in Canada. We, so we spread the love. So there's a game in Vancouver uh, in two weeks and I'm doing that and a couple of club shows as well. And then back to Toronto, then back to London, then back to Toronto for the actual beginning of the basketball season, which I'm super pumped. Yeah, so like, so like what I'm always that experience like to uh, actually be in the stadium, packed stadium, and I know you don't get as much leeway in terms of what you can play and whatnot, because obviously you're, it's, you know, within that environment as opposed to your own, you know, atmosphere where someone wants you specifically would get tickets and stuff. But what's that like? Just, um, just that, that whole experience, because a lot of people I'm sure like they, a lot, a lot of people listening, I'm sure, are familiar with the NBA and Toronto Raptors and stuff. So that you know, they they can relate to even being in a stadium, but to play for a stadium and to be up there, like I know you've been doing it a while as well. So what's what's that like for you? It's indescribable, man. You should actually come to a game with me to see when the season starts. Yeah, we'll go yeah, off. just yeah, yeah, hit me up. You. I would go. I haven't been in like five years to a Raptors game, so that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. We The team is completely different now than it was five years ago. Like, we're a contender now. It's awesome. The energy is different. The vibe is great. When you come, you'll, like, sit right beside the DJ booth. So you'll understand what it is from that vantage point. But, like, it's – I can't describe how it feels because it's, like, the same thing that I was talking about regarding parties and playing music and watching people react. It's that to 20,000 people in a stadium, like, three times a week. It's unreal. Like, I'm, I'm going into season number 14 there, which is ridiculous to me. But prior to ever doing this, I could have never, ever dreamed that this would be what I would be doing. 
as in general, much less as a DJ. Like, it's super, super. Like, it charges me up so much to just play a song and see that many people go crazy. And also, I'm a huge basketball fan. As I said, I play basketball for like a lot of my life. So to be able to be around basketball and play music is the perfect marriage of, of things for me. And regarding what I can play, oddly enough, they are very, 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 they give me a lot of leeway. Like I can create pretty much whatever I want as long as I keep it diverse and keep it clean. The odd time there'll be a song here or there that they're like, we'd rather you not play that. Uh, for example, like OT Genesis a few years ago, that song Coco, I'm in love with the Coco. I was playing it until some of the higher ups found out the song was directly about cocaine. And they're like, yeah, we can't have that song being played in the stadium, in this family environment, which I totally get, you know what I mean? But for the most yeah. part, I have a lot of freedom to play whatever I want to play. And, and then there's some things that are played specifically for the dancers or for a competition or a contest or something like that. But it's really, um, yeah, I do. I have a lot of creative control. I, I, I've gotten the chance to break a lot of records there, like new artists that are from Toronto or from other parts of Canada or from even other parts of the world. I make it a point to, it's, like, it's almost like a radio station where I make it a point to just play a certain song every game for a month type of thing. And I can physically see what it does in the charts or in the, in the streams with that artist. And that's like a dope, a dope ass position to be in because now I'm like a gatekeeper in terms of like every single Toronto rapper wants to hear their song at a Raptors game. That's, that's the dream almost, you know what I mean? And it's literally as much as a, me deciding to play it or not. So it's, it's a cool position to be in. Yeah, no, it sounds like it. It sounds like it. And 14, 14 seasons is quite a while too. And even when I saw it, when I found you on Instagram after, I was like, oh, he's still doing that. That's really sweet. Because you know, a lot of times positions like that, yeah, they either they just get moved around and I don't know, stuff happens, right? But it exactly. is interesting, like getting back to what we were talking about earlier, like again, and with your basketball, like your interest in basketball and then DJing. And just, I always think like that future self is just there, you know, and it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just a matter of linking up with it and making it happen. Um, so yeah, it's really cool. And yeah, 20, 20,000, it, does the stadium hold more than that sometimes? Like it gets up to like 30 or am I thinking? No, no, no. That's Rogers Center. Has Rogers Center, been, right, right. Okay. I'm getting mixed yeah, up. Our stadium, it's like 19, it's like high 19. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's insane. Yeah. And you can play like new artists. And, so do you get a lot of requests from new artists that are interested in just getting featured on? Oh Yeah. My, my DMs and my email inbox is full of shitty records and great records and like uh -huh. a bunch of stuff. And I That's just pick and choose what I think would work in that environment and also what I think is good. And like I, 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 I pride myself with having a pretty good ear for music. It's kind of my job. And I don't play music that I don't like. Like I've had offers from a number of artists asking to pay me to play their song at one yeah, I was going to ask about that too, because I'm someone would just be like, hey, I'll give you whatever amount. Yeah. yeah. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that at all. Like fundamentally, I don't believe in that. If I don't, if I like the record, I will play the record because I like the record. If I don't like the record, there's nothing you can do to get me to play that record. You know what I mean? Because when I play records, that's my reputation on the line. I'm telling whatever comes out of my speakers, I'm telling the people listening, I like this. And if I don't like it, there's no amount of money that will allow me to expose my brand in such a way. Like I, my brand is, is, is I built my brand to be the type of brand that people can trust. I want people to know that if I'm playing a song, they should probably know this song. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, if they've never heard it before and I'm playing it and I'm talking about it and I'm just putting it on Instagram and I'm tweeting about it and whatnot, I want people to be like, oh, shit, I should probably check for the song. Four Corners says this is dope. Let me, let me pay attention a little bit more. You know what I mean? And that's, that's what I say when I say I've, I've helped break a few artists and like get them, help them get to the next level because of what I've done. And me putting my personal stamp of approval on it means something. And I can't water it down by taking people's money to play a song that I don't believe in. Mm, yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. I, I get a lot of uh, random messages for stuff too. And yeah, same thing, like even just emails about products and stuff that people want to send. And it's like, I don't necessarily need or want that 
but you know, it could get paid, just don't bother. Some stuff I'll take that I, I do like, but yeah, it's, it's similar in a lot of ways. Um, so I think we covered a lot here, but we're coming up on about an hour. Um, my other question to you is kind of about relating to what we're just speaking about, but could you see yourself scaling Four Corners to eventually creating some sort of record label where you're representing artists that you do like, that you are passionate about, that you are interested in, uh, be it DJs or, you know, other music artists. And, and then they would be going around touring and everything like that. You can kind of just kick it and watch it all unfold. And then when you're really feeling it, you, you need to still, still do the Raptors gig, but when you're feeling it, then you go and tour yourself or, you know, just travel and just say, I don't know, just be an interesting way for you to scale what you have and scale your brand. So have you, some, some you can consider it all or? Yeah, well, actually, uh, it's it's uh, funny you asked me that. I actually did start an independent label uh, about two years ago. Um, and I really started it on the name of being able to have a vehicle to put my own music out and then have it grow to something else. I put out a couple of records. It's not as easy as you might think or like it, or maybe you don't think. It's just it's not that easy. So like I put the records out. They did what they did, but they didn't really... They didn't blow up or anything, which is fine. You don't expect to blow up overnight. But I learned a lot in that time. And then I also realized, I was honest with myself, in that, you know what, my production skills were not on the level of, not on a world-class level yet. So I needed to take a step back, work on music. Since then, I've done some remixes for some other artists and whatnot that have been done pretty well. So I've been this year quietly working on music for a long time. And I still have my label situation there that when I'm ready, I'll be able to put music out through that but at the same time in my collaborating with other artists and through the Raptors meeting so many artists that are contacting me trying to get me to play the music and whatnot I've met some really dope artists that I'm considering signing on to do certain things so like what you're talking about is something it is part of my end goal to be a record executive I've, I've actually worked for record companies in the past for for short times here and there and I've learned a lot along the way and that is definitely one of my end goals. To say that I'll stop touring because of that, I'm not sure because like I said, being on stage is my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something you're passionate about. Yeah. yeah, it's the central light that shines on all this stuff. But a record company, like it's already, it started. It's just, I'm gonna focus on growing that over the next few years. Artist management is something that I'm starting to dabble in because some of these dope young artists that I've seen, like I want to help them get to where they want to go. If they don't really understand the business or don't have representation or whatnot. I'm consulting a few and like considering actually taking a full management role with a couple. And through the DJ City thing that I'm working, like that's another avenue that I'm able to push certain things through and to help cultivate and mentor young DJs and whatnot. Like I'm I'm about the culture and I'm about good quality music and artistry and I have my hands in a lot of things more than just being on stage that will all help all of us essentially move forward mm -hmm. so that's it's already like basically what I'm saying is what you're what you're speaking about and a couple other things are already in motion um but I will be on stage for as long as I'm physically able to do it man because it's it's the it's it's the basis of it all. It's how it all started, and it's where I have the most fun. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely, then, if you have the most fun there, it's something you wouldn't want to give up. Um, I, yeah. just, I, I get that feeling, like, if, if personally I had artists coming to me and playing me some stuff, and I, and I really liked some of it, I would want to back them. And, I, I if, yeah, just having that label would allow you to do so. That's why I came to mind when you started talking about the rappers and all these people coming to you. I was thinking, like, wow, man, if yeah. you had some really good, unique-sounding people, It'd be like, I want to be a part of what this person's doing, you know, but like and somewhat passively, but still coaching them kind of like what you're saying and just bringing them up, especially if they're younger and don't know like what they're up to or what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like in, in, in a number of capacities, it's, it's, I'm in a position where I have a network and I have certain connections and I have the reach through with clients and I, I'm like one of those I'm in one of those positions where I can plug a lot of things in and I enjoy that position because I, it gives me the opportunity to weed out what I think doesn't need to be there and push forward the things that I think people really need to be exposed to. 
That's pretty sweet. And that's, and that's a great position to put yourself in just to help coach people and bring them along. But um, yeah, so I mean, thanks for coming on. I think we should kind of like wrap it because again, it's getting a little bit long now. And if people are still listening, thank you so much for listening. But <laughs> um, do you have anything else you want to like closing thoughts, anything else you want to share with anyone? Maybe someone that's interested in becoming a DJ or getting involved in the music industry. I know tons of people are heavily interested in music and, and want to get involved. So do you have any sort of like guiding advice, advice for them or even just coaching words, kind of like what you're doing for these new artists, but you, you could share with anyone that's listening? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when I was getting into the industry, one of the, well, two important things. Number one, I took advantage of internship opportunities, learning from people who are currently doing or have done the things that you want to do. So I would, and advice to any young artist, any young DJ, why not reach out to people who are doing what you're doing, what you want to do, and just find out if there's a way to be in the room so that you can learn from them because there's no better teacher than experience. Um, and the second thing for those who want to reach, like I can't, and I'm putting a big disclaimer on this, I can't take the time to speak to everybody, but there were certain people that really allowed me to pick their brains early in my career that that, that shit's been so helpful forever. Like not even necessarily direct mentors, but just pseudo mentors from time to time in different times of my life that I've been able to ask and I pride myself on making time for people to do the same. So like if anybody really has any real questions, don't just ask me like, how do I become a, a, a star DJ? Like, don't ask me stupid shit. Like real questions, like I've been thinking about doing this. How can I, you know, get to the next level? I've been working at this for a long time. It doesn't seem to, do you have any advice of where I should pivot? Like stuff like that. I'm happy to answer questions like that through Instagram DM or email me. Uh, info at fourcorners.com like reach out and I will get back to I try to get back to everybody at least at some point maybe not right away but in time I do because I think that's important you gotta you gotta pay it forward certain people help me I'm here to help other people too I, I care about the culture I want good shit to be out there so like definitely reach out and young DJs definitely pay attention to DJ City go on djcity.com Check out the site, check out the blog. The blog is very, very informative as to like what's going on in the DJ world, new gear, all that kind of stuff. And it's something that you really, really should pay attention to. And if you're in Canada, again, reach out to me and um, see if you can get involved in some way because it's, it's truly dope. I was with them before I worked with them. Now that I am, I'm proud to be working with this company because it's such a great company for what it is that it's doing. Sweet, sounds awesome. Great advice for people, and you want some, you want dope shit to come out, and that—that's perfect. I love it. Yeah. I just want, I just want, I just want a world full of dopeness, man. And yeah, can yeah. Have, sounds have, sounds beautiful to me. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking the time, and uh, I'm sure we'll talk again soon, or I'll probably even see you soon. But you do hit me up about that Raptors game. I will. I'll check it out. That'd be cool. Yeah. Thanks, right. Raptors. Yeah, yeah. Take it easy. Take care.